Thanks very much for staying with us. Time now for Eye in Africa with me, Georgia Calvin Smith. Tonight, the UN calls for Eritrean troops to exit Ethiopia after saying that it is clear that they are taking part in the conflict in Tigray, in Ethiopia's north, and that there's strong evidence that they're responsible for the atrocities. For atrocities, both Ethiopia and Eritrea had denied the presence of the troops. Also, Ivory Coast is gearing up to legislative elections this weekend. Dozens of opposition party members and activists remain in prison following an arrest around last October's presidential votes, and rights groups say that evidence against many is flimsy. And in Congo Brazzaville, where despite vast natural resources, many people still live without power, the city of Pointe Noire is home to dozens of multinationals, but the wealth is yet to trickle down. But first, the UN says it's now abundantly clear that Eritrean troops are operating in the conflict in the northern Ethiopian region of Tigray and that there is strong evidence that they're responsible for atrocities. The UN's called for the fighters to leave Ethiopia. Both Ethiopia and Eritrea have denied that Eritreans have been supporting federal troops in suppressing Tigray fighters. A military operation against them was launched last November. On Thursday, the US also spoke out about its concerns over reported human rights abuses in the region. The UN's accused all sides of abuses and called on Addis to allow monitors into the country to further investigate. A preliminary analysis of the information received indicates that serious violations of international law, possibly amounting to war crimes and crimes against humanity, may have been committed by multiple actors, including the Ethiopian National Defense Forces, the Tigray People's Liberation Front, Eritrean Armed Forces, and Amhara Regional Forces and Affiliated Militia. Reliable sources have shared information about killings of eight protesters by security forces between the 9th and the 10th of February in Adigrat, Mekele, Shire, and Wukro. More than 136 cases of rape have also been reported in hospitals in Mekele, Ader, Adigrat, and Wukro in the east of the Tigray region between December and January, with indications that there are many more such unreported cases. Well, it's been difficult to get information out of Tigray since the fighting began, but reportedly thousands have died. Addis denies the scale of the bloodshed, but local accounts of brutality continue to emerge. Few journalists have had access to the Tigray region since fighting broke out in November. When the residents of Dengolat saw some reporters, they rushed out to show them photos of the victims of a massacre. They say it took place in November and was carried out by Eritrean troops. Eritrea denies having sent soldiers to Tigray to help Ethiopia fight the regional TPLF ruling party. Locals said 164 civilians were killed. Residents said this was the site of a mass grave. On Wednesday, the government declared it was investigating credible allegations of atrocities in the Tigray region. Analysts fear this could be one of many massacres that occurred in the area. The TPLF dominated the ruling party for nearly three decades. But since 2018 and the arrival of new Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed, they say they have been marginalized. Since the fighting broke out in November, experts believe thousands of people have been killed. Look now at some news in brief. Ethiopian opposition party, the Oromo Federalist Congress, says it will not take part in June's parliamentary elections unless jailed key members are released. Bekele Gerba, Dijene Tafa and Jawa Mohammed are facing terrorism charges. They were arrested last September in unrest that followed the murder in June of popular musician Hachalu Hundesa. The Oromo Liberation Front is also considering withdrawing from the vote. Their absence from the ballot could undermine the credibility of the key poll. Ghana's Supreme Court has thrown out an opposition challenge to last December's presidential election because of a lack of evidence. Former President John Mahama called for a rerun after narrowly losing out in the polls to his rival, incumbent Nana Akufo Addo. Ghanaian and foreign observers viewed the poll as generally free and fair, and Akufo Addo's call on the opposition to turn the page. A 24-hour curfew has been brought in in the Nigerian town 
when nearly 300 schoolgirls were abducted last Friday after security forces opened fire as the former captives were being returned to their families on Wednesday. Now, the girls had been released the day before by their captors. At least one person reportedly died in the chaos in Jangebe. The shooting reportedly started after stones were thrown at government officials as crowds became frustrated at the drawn-out formal handover of the children. Now, Ivory Coast is gearing up to legislative elections this weekend. Last October, at least 85 people were killed in violence in connection to the presidential election. The opposition had called for a campaign of civil disobedience and initially refused to recognise the result. Well, dozens of opposition members and activists remain in prison. Rights groups say that the evidence against many is flimsy. Our correspondents met with the family of one man who was jailed for trying to prevent the arrest of opposition leader Henri Kounan Bédier. Innocent has just dropped a bombshell. For the first time, he's telling his village that his brother has spent the past four months in prison, arrested for disturbing the public order. Nous savons qu'il ne vole pas, il ne tue pas, il ne fait pas autre chose que qu'on peut condamner, mais il fait la politique. Et on nous est, selon les informations, c'est qu'il serait arrêté au domicile du président Bédié, parce que les militaires qui étaient en mission pour arrêter le président Bédié venaient le prendre. Et lui, avec son groupe de jeunes, ont fait un blocus pour empêcher les gens de prendre Bédié. Alors ils les ont ramassé, puis ils les ont déversés à la Maca. News that a community member is locked inside the Maca prison is taken extremely seriously. Innocent even put off telling his family, worried that his mother would have a heart attack. On a discuté, discuté. Il n'y a plus personne à jouer en prison. Mais le conseil est clair aujourd'hui. Le conseil est clair et à main pour nous. Pour nous. Et puis la boise, boise. Pas d'or. Pas d'or. Pas d'or. La gare libérée, moi, là. Pas d'or. Pas d'or. Pas d'or. Pas d'or. Human rights groups are investigating arrests made during the last election. They say that dozens of opposition party members are still in prison. Et ces, ces populations, ces communautés ne sont pas prêtes, ne sont pas prêtes à aller à la paix tant que ces frères sont encore en, déten en détention. The Ivorian Justice Ministry did not respond to our interview request, but a mayor from the ruling RHDP party, standing as a candidate in Saturday's parliamentary elections, defended the legal proceedings. Il faut laisser la justice faire son travail, c'est-à-dire les juger, et après quoi, comme on l'a vu, si ce sont des personnes qui sont innocentes, elles seront libérées. It remains to be seen whether the arrests made around October's presidential race will impact things this time around. Well, in Congo Brazzaville, where despite vast natural resources, many people still live without power, including communities on the outskirts of Pointe Noire, the country's main economic and commercial hub. The port city is home to dozens of multinationals making millions from oil and oil byproducts. But the wealth is yet to trickle down. Rosie Pioff reports. When the sun sets, the village of Chicanou, some 30 kilometers east of Pointe Noire, goes completely dark. In her small shop, Antoinette uses a torch to serve her customers. Look, when I display the products on my stall, people come and steal them because I can barely see anything. Not so long ago, I bought a freezer. You can still see the wires, but I had to sell it because there's no power. In the neighboring village of Bunji, this farmer had all his sheep stolen. He says it's impossible to watch over his livestock at night without light. He also thinks that the local economy is being held back by the lack of electricity. Some people use generators, but most of us can't afford them. Foreign companies have been pumping oil for decades. It's about time they gave us electricity. Everyone will be better off. Some would make food and sell it. We'd have carpentry workshops, we'd make furniture. This would create jobs. Most villages in the area have yet to be connected to the power grid. But only a few kilometres away, oil companies enjoy a 24-hour supply of electricity thanks to a network of high-voltage lines. The Catholic Church launched a campaign back in 2017 to denounce what they say is a blatant example of injustice. 
The message we want to send to politicians and foreign investors with electricity for all is that you cannot get rich while the rest of the population remains in poverty, right on the doorstep of oil companies. Congo Brazzaville's national electricity company declined our request for an interview. The Congolese government, meanwhile, said that improving access to power remains one of its top priorities. And the Seychelles say that they will be reopened to tourism this month. The archipelago shut down during the pandemic, seeing revenue from visitors plummet by 61% as the coronavirus restrictions slashed arrivals by 70%. But starved resorts will be open to welcome holiday makers from the 25th. So feast your eyes on what is potentially in store for those of you who might be able to consider this as an option. Everyone is welcome, other than travellers coming from South Africa. There won't be a quarantine, but visitors will have to have a negative COVID test and stay in specially certified hotels. So there you have it, an option for if you can and when you can look out for uh, holidays somewhere in uh, Africa. Uh, that is, though, all we have time for for Iron Africa. Do stay with us. More coming up. Laura. Culture Daily. Every day, France 24 fills you in on the latest in the world of culture. In your Encore magazine, meet the artists, get to know them and their work, watch them and listen to them talking about their creations and the era we live in. Stay up to date with all things cultural in France and around the world. Get your culture fix daily on France 24 and France24.com.